to say thank you very much for all the comments and the lovely comments and the well wishing for my rut and suggestions as to how to get out of the rut. Uh, I'm still catching up on all the comments, I've got lots still to answer. But thank you very much, it warmed my wee Scottish cold heart. Um, I'm still in my rut but I've been playing every day despite a lot of people saying don't touch it for a while but I just do it just to get my hands running through the motions and just playing. But what I have done that's significant, that's definitely helped, is I've tried to remove all self-imposed pressure of bringing out another video. I did that by saying, that's it, Paul, you're, you're empty. I'm not going to do another video now for at least a month. And of course, when you have that mindset, you start to enjoy the playing. So after three, five, seven, nine days, you think, well, I'm actually quite enjoying myself again. Also, I've been playing this. Now this is never going to be my number one guitar, in fact it's not my guitar at all, it's my dad's. But what do you play on a Gretsch? I've really no idea. There's the stereotypical sort of slap back delay stuff. There's the Brian Setzer thing. But I'm a Gibson guy or a Fender guy and I'm, I find it's a very very different tone. So I listened by accident to somebody called Mark Johnston who's a YouTuber you might have heard of him who does demos. That's his thing, he does demos. And he's a very different type of player to me. Um, he did a demo of something called the Fairfield Circuitry Shallow Water Pedal, which does intrigue me. But in listening to his demo, he does that thing, I stole a little section of what he does, and I've kind of made that one of the hooks of that little intro piece that you just heard. So thank you to Mark Johnston for letting me steal your your hook and I've just embellished it and exploded it to what I want. Um, I'm going to give you a lesson on that at the end if it appeals to anybody. It didn't even particularly appeal to me. I'm, ambient playing isn't really my thing but it did get me down a little loop looking at people like Rabia Massad and just players that really do use their pedal boards and it was fun. Um, what else have I been doing? Yes, I bought a car. My driving school car, as I said last time, is getting to that age now where I'm, you know, I don't want an unreliable car and it's been great, but I think now's the time to shift it. So I've been looking at cars and test driving cars. So I bought myself a car that I've researched to the nth degree I've been really looking into reliability of cars and I started out my job as a driving instructor with a Japanese car then I flirted with other makes and models and I plan to see out my career with a Japanese car and um, so I've got this I'll put it on screen now a little Suzuki Swift out for the sport version because well why not eh? you're only young ones lovely little car a sort of cheap plastic interior it's just a little Japanese car based on their little you know, Swift but it'll be good fun for me and the driving school that's pretty much it other than just once again thank you so much for all your nice comments and your suggestions I will now try to break down a little bit of what I was doing on that ambient piece just in case somebody gets something out of it let's go Fine. 
Excellent. <clears throat> Welcome to the most useless guitar lesson ever. I'll show you what I did, but when you see how I came up with it, uh, you can see just how I'm not driven by theory in any way, shape or form. But you might still get something out of it. So here we go with the, with the bass tone, because some of this piece was just about me trying to get into ambient guitar a little bit. So you heard my bass tone with nothing on. Middle position, as Greg Cock would say. For some extra brilliance and, and presence, I add just a blues driver. For some delay, I add a flashback. For some warble and modulation, I add Madison Cunningham's pedal, <coughs> excuse me, the GHS Emperor. So now it's a wee bit seasick. Getting into it. I'll take the modulation off just now, just in case you do physically throw up all over your screens. Just D minor is the key we're in. I have dropped the fat string down a tone, so I've got that open D drone. A baby D minor with the finger off gives you that lovely half step rub. And a weird screws with your brain because my right hand is going south like this. And yet I get notes that, that drop. I'm going, then I'm getting higher. I expect to get higher again when I go to the thinner string, but it drops. You get that lovely screwing with your head kind of feeling. And then I got into it, into Mark Johnson, the YouTuber's bit that I stole. on D minor, I think it's, I don't know what it's called, you know me, but that note is the two note. There's D minor. One, two, well it's one, two, three, four, so one, two, three. So there's the two note. So I'm going to call it D minor two for want of a better thing. And I'm just playing with that. By the way, because I'm down a tone, of course, notes that I fret on this fat string if you're down a tone, copy me. If you're not down a tone, you'll have to compensate. So that is now, <laughs> looks like an E note on the 12th fret, but of course that is now a D. I'm strumming the open D string and flatting, if fretting the ninth fret of the G. I'm avoiding touching the A string, nor the B nor the thin E either. So it's just really the, the fat E string, open D drone, and the G string. on YouTube it looks like these fingers are fretting they're not they're completely floating then I keep that note but refret it with the ring finger so that I can get that in and again the strings I'm hitting are the exact same strings the fat E the, the open D drone and the G string all it is, musically speaking, I'm not a theory person, but I think I'm really just playing D minors or D minor flavors. I would say that's a D minor, it's a D minor two. I would just say that as a D minor with a, an, a B flat bass. Looks like a C bass, but of course it's a B flat bass because I'm tuned down. Followed by a, another D minor, this time with a, that'd be a G bass. D minor with that, which I guess is an F bass. Is that right? If we substitute for the tuning, all gets very complicated. So simple as, lots of fun to be had with that. Then, all I'm doing there is I don't really know what I'm doing. That's my blues scale in D. I don't think it 
it's fair to say that it's a uh, you know, I'm, uh, to me in my head that is just still D minors with different basses on them. If you know about theory, maybe you can correct me, but the last thing I'm going to do is to spend hours figuring out what it is because it will do me no good. It will do me no good to know what this is. I, I, maybe that's why I'm in a rut here, I'm not getting better because the people that I admire maybe, these days the people I admire maybe do know what they're doing. Maybe that's why I'm getting left behind, but still I ain't doing it. Wild horses will have to drag me into theory land, I'm not interested. And then back to D, and all I'm doing of course is just playing this time. The B and G strings there, and putting this, this hooking over the thumb on the fat string. And taking the whole thing down for three frets. Maybe D minor with the, the first finger off. Repeating. Then a B flat seven, which of course is one fret above my five chord, which will be A. And I've added that for some dissonance. And that's just a baby D seven. So there's my. I like the way that sounds because. By fretting it like that, that looks like a regular status quo bar shape, but of course because we're down a tone on the bottom, I've got this rare situation happening where that is therefore giving it the seventh note. Normally that gives it the root, but today it gives it this the flat seven. And that's just my just barring the D, G and B strings on the fifth fret. Sixth fret of the G string to make it a regular A7. Adding a bit of dissonance on the top there. Then what did it do? Now I think I've let some freak out happen with the whatever I did with my Digitech freak out. Then D minor again, just walking up the chord. That that shape. You've heard me do that a million times. That type of thing. So I'm just going. I'm adding this B flat note. Now to me, that's a G minor with the B flat note. Then down to the five, which is the. my baby D minor with a finger off. Same again. That's a G7. So I've gone from G minor to G7 to C to A. Back to D minor. some freestyle flipped pickups D minor 6 down to the 2 is that a 2? no it's a 6 again staying with D minor Once again to the six, just playing lead on a D minor theme. Uh, what did it do? That's right. It's hard on a Gretsch. Gretsches don't let you play. You cobble your ankles together and then say running. I can't run. It's a where's the cutaway? Just me walking up baby D minor, but because I'm starting there, it's the six. I just played it fast. 
with a certain structured rhythm. That type of thing. Then what did I do? Well, then I went. That's just a wee Paul Cookism. I was looking for little Julian Lages. He has little standard things he does, little abstract things that he puts in the middle of pretty pieces to make, to screw with you. And then he comes back to the prettiness and you're like, oh, thank God for that. Tension and release, I guess. So one of my little things I've learned is, yeah. it's a play, I guess, on the whole step scale and the chord that seems to marry in with the whole step scale is the augmented. I've talked about this before. Every note in an augmented chord is at least two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, zero, away from each other. So there's no odd numbers. So therefore you get that that type of sound, that ghosty sound. So that's just me thinking about that. You don't have to learn. This is just a, a thing I do. to know what it is. And that's augmented. Then I'm grabbing opportunities here to go sticking with that whole tip scale. Just something, and it has to be done expertly. It has to be just go, you can't even fuck around with it. You can't even muff it up. It's got to be good. If it wasn't good, I wouldn't have released this particular take. So, because if it's not good, it's just bad. It's all over bad. But at least, you're, at least if you're playing a very unpleasant lick well, then it can serve its purpose. It can do its job of creating tension. If you play a lick like that badly, then it just sounds awful. You might still think it sounds awful. I think it sounds good. If you play it with confidence. Um, and then I think I went back into the song. Um, freestyle. Just copy that if you want and finish. Oh, you've ruined it there, Paul, in the end. Back to my rot. <laughs>